Phillies in Pro Bowl. Not here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We will call the uh, Common Council to order. I will ask our clerk to call the roll to determine a quorum. Elder Person May. Here. Probst. Here. Frankie. Here. Rote. Here. Vitale. Here. Weigel. Here. Barzak. Be excused. Chapleski. Here. Haas. Here. Lysak. Here. Nine present, one excused. We have a quorum. I ask that you join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Alderman May this evening. Move on to item D on our agendas. We have one item for public hearing. I'll ask our clerk to read that item. A hearing on the special use permit for international autos of Milwaukee to establish a proposed vehicle repair auto body shop and auto sales at 10221 West Arthur Avenue. Mr. Stiebel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On the southwestern corner of, uh, I forgot what the street was, can't even hardly read it here. Uh, Arthur, I think it is, uh, is an old uh, Cadillac dealership that's being converted temporarily into auto repair facility for the International Auto and the Audi dealerships, which are owned by the same company. They'll be located in this building. Their long-range plan is to put another uh, another dealership in there, but it's five acres, and they're going to be amending the existing a special use that we approved a while ago for a Maserati dealership. Uh, that didn't come to fruition, so they're going to use the land for another project, at least on an interim basis. And their proposal is to, to remove the northern part of that building, uh, and then it, about in 1991 or somewhere in there, there was a, a metal addition put on it. That will also be taken down uh, along with uh, the, the metal building in the, in the back. Uh, so th this building will be demolished, a new facade put in, and the, the existing buildings will also be renovated, uh, or, or at least painted, uh, to give it much more sharp, cleaner uh, condition. Uh, then inside the building, the, the neck of the building will, will be refacaded, and I'll show you that in just a second, and then the interior bays will be for auto, uh, auto repair facility. Uh, they're going to put a nice uh, metal framed, architecturally metal framed with glass doors. This is the north elevation looking from uh, the eastern side of the building and this is the, uh, the western side of the building where you'll actually pull in, leave your car there, and then when you come to pick it up, it'll be exiting from, uh, from the east side. Uh, and these are the additional elevations that are going to remain the same at this time except for the, uh, the glass doors that are also going to be put on on the front facade. Uh, the biggest issue, because of the car dealership, we require 20% landscaping, which that will be met. Uh, 264 parking spaces on the site, 54 uh, required for parking, and those 54 spaces uh, will, can now be used for car sales or, or, or for a customer uh, repair vehicles, only for um, customers or employees. Uh, the plan commission uh, has asked them to put in uh, six additional landscaping beds, and that's the con uh, only additional condition for approval. Uh, hours of operation are the typical 7.30 to 9.30 Monday through Friday, and then uh, 9 to 6 on Saturday, closed on Sunday. And they'll employ about 20 people. Uh, the plan commission in May approved uh, this recommendation uh, subject to the additional landscaping. If you have any additional questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Stiebel. Are there any questions from the Common Council? Seeing none, are there any questions or comments from the members of the audience? Okay, seeing none, we will close public hearing number one. And <coughs> excuse me, we will move to item E on your agendas, which is citizen participation. This is an opportunity for residents to address the Council on any matters of interest to them. We do ask that you limit your comments to approximately five minutes and give us your name and address for our official record. 
Robert Brown, I live at 2160 South 86th Street. I'm, I'm president of Stop the Violence Incorporated. You can find me on Facebook or whatever. Uh, just, I want to bring this to your attention. I had six people go to the school board meeting last week. They were deciding on the bathroom bill. I, I thought I'd bring it up to you to show you how disgusted I am with that school board because <coughs> we talked, we were all against it. And they said, well, we'll have an attorney look at it and take care of it. We asked them when and what. They wouldn't give us no information. They sort of blew us out. They did everything but throw us out the door. They weren't interested in any public comments. So don't be surprised if you don't have your, your daughters or your, the boys running in your daughter's bathrooms. I'm, the way they sounded, they're going to pass it. They're not interested in public comments. Thought I'd bring that up to you. Okay. I hate to be so negative, but that's the truth. I mean, I can't help it. That's the way it went, you know. And the other thing uh, I want to bring up, we, you know, we were in South Milwaukee, and I did bring it to your attention about the Muslim religion and terrorism. And sure enough, what happened right after I was here, about 10 days later, here goes Orlando. And you know what all happened, the shooting 49, 50 people down there. Same thing happened when I spoke in South Milwaukee. They, they caught that guy ready to shoot up the uh, place on the east side. Here's the problem. What's going on now is almost worse than the big mosque they're putting in, in, in South Milwaukee. They bought that big black Catholic church. Now, two miles away in Cudahy, they, got a, they bought the YMCA, and I'll give you the name of the place. Um, it's called the Federation of Balkan American Associations Incorporated. They bought the property. They have ties to the Muslim Brotherhood. Charter schools being under investigation for anti-American activities like pledging allegiance to Allah, replacing Bible studies with the studies of the Quran, accusations of violence of anti-American pro-Muslim terror type activities. That's all going to be, there's a meeting coming up the 12th. I'm putting out flyers and I'm organizing. They have a lot of people down there, 7.30 at the South Milwaukee City Hall. They've already taken out a permit for the, um, for the, uh, using the, the, um, the athletic stuff that's in the building, you know, from the YMCA. Well, what's up is a public hearing uh, for special uses for these other things, bringing all these Muslim groups in. So if you got any friends down there, you can expect that all the Muslim Brotherhood people that terrorist type activities. You'll really see a lot of them. When I spoke at South Milwaukee, I was threatened other, we had about, I don't know, 50 people down there. Later on I had a meeting, I had over 100 people. But I was greeted with, with threats. They slipped my tires the next day right at my house here in West Ellis. And I can tell you this, when one of the, we go down at the mosque on 13th Street, and I'm, I'm, I have studied the Quran, and I, everybody I go with, I make them study and know the Quran. I want them to know what it says. It's a very violent religion. They want to, if you don't, you don't agree, I read some of this the last time I was here, that if you don't believe in what the Quran says, you should terrorize them, behead them, uh, uh, all kinds of bad stuff about them. And uh, that's what's coming, and we want to, the, the guy that did the shooting there in Orlando, it does say in, in the Quran that's, that they read in the United States. Forget about what they read in the foreign countries. It says there too, they should stone the gays to death when you confront them. Now I know the Bible says to do bad stuff to them, but they want the government to take care of them, not the individual people. You know, they throw them off of buildings, you know, they got some people if they, they turn against the Quran and, and Mohammed. Mr. Brown, you have one minute remaining. Okay, they burned them alive the other week, 30 some people. You can better believe, I, 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 I might not be alive in two years, but mark my word, you'll be, this will become a third world company, and one of the reasons behind it, and I'll close with this, Mr. Obama, you know, his, his father was a Muslim, he never denounced the religion, he's doing everything in his power to cover up for what the Muslim religion is doing, even that when they... They, they, they couldn't even put out an honest report of what happened in, in Orlando, Florida. They had to cover it up. Our president, I, I'm sorry to say, covers up as much as he can. And, and I just feel sorry for America if, if Hillary gets in because she wants to do what he does. So 
Thank you for listening, and I hope some of you will come to come down there. Uh, and another thing, wait, wait a little while, and you'll have a mosque here in West Ellis too. That'll be coming next year, very shortly. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Hi, I am uh, Violet Brown, and I'm going to um, say all happy um, summer to you all. It's summer right now, so I hope you have a, a wonderful summer, because I know you all work hard, and we're very appreciative of all of you. Um, first of all, I'm against the bathroom bill that will be coming up in the schools, and um, the church that I go to they said to love one another. So we do love everyone, but first of all, um, I am against Sharia law. I'm for the American law. I'm for the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and I'm for everything that's American. I love America. So if anybody asks me, you want to be a friend to certain people, I cannot be a friend to them because I'm an infidel. And what happens to you if you're an infidel? You're so. Anyway, I try to be nice to everyone, but there's a certain group of people that are not going to try to be nice to me unless I convert, and I can't. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation this evening? Good evening, Mayor Devine and members of the Common Council. My name is Alfred R. Couturier. I live at 2801 South 72nd Street, West Dallas, Wisconsin. And I recently have passed a petition around to the residents who live on 72nd Street from West Beloit Road to West Connecticut River Parkway. I asked 69 of the residents of 72nd Street if they knew what bump outs were and they looked at me with a blank look on their face and they were wondering what language I was talking. They didn't know anything about bump outs, period. And I explained to them, I had a drawing of what the bump outs were and <clears throat> they said that uh, they did not want any bump outs. Of the 69 people that I had talked to, <clears throat> I asked them if any of those people called about speeding, and they said no. And the, the uh, re residents of 72nd Street said that the bump outs, after I showed them the drawings that I had, would narrow the streets down, and the residents of South 72nd Street uh, would have too narrow of a way they said that the road is too narrow the way it is now. And I, um, well, I had two people on Cleveland Avenue that said they did not want bump outs, and I had <coughs> one person uh, north of Cleveland Avenue uh, did not ever, ever wanted bump outs. So, um, Anyway, I had uh, Alderman Gary Barza call me on Wednesday, June 15th, and told me that there would be no bump outs on 72nd Street. Now, I have received a letter, uh, which was on June 20th, saying the engineering department, Joseph M. Birch, assistant city engineer, is still trying to uh, impact the people on South 76th Street, I mean South 72nd Street with bump outs. So anyway, um, <coughs> I, w I talked to it, uh, Joe Birch and he said that uh, out of the people that I had, uh, 46 of them were valid and uh, one of them recanted on the, on the petition and I have uh, four more people who uh, 
will be notifying, or actually five, one, one already called them today, so I got four more that would be notifying Joseph Birch that they are not interested in bump outs, period. So that is why I'm here today. But I do have a list of 84 people that live in the West Dallas area and off of 72nd Street, and they want nothing to do with bump outs, but I can't use them for the count. So right now, that's all I have to say for now on their bump out program. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else wish to address the council under citizen participation? Bachman, I live on 2881 South 72nd Street. Uh, I've been a Rust Dallas resident all my life. My family had the home built in 1958. Uh, they're talking about redoing 72nd Street from 72nd and Beloit all the way down to Kinney Knick. I agree, you know, the, road's, the road is bad. However, I'm also against the bump outs. They came today and they sprained it. They took pink spray paint and they took and they sprayed where the bump outs will be. Well, okay, that's great. I live, Dakota Street goes this way and if you keep going, you're gonna go right up to my driveway, okay? Well, the bump out is behind my, my driveway and when I wanna get out, I'm not gonna be able to get out of there. Also, what about winter? Where are they gonna put the snow? The bump outs are going way into the street. Our street is gonna be narrowed. How are we gonna get in and out of the streets? I really feel it would be great if they would just go and redo the streets the way that they were. <coughs> going out like that into a narrow street doesn't make sense. I'm not the only person that feels this way. We have a petition going. We have people that are gonna protest it. You know, we're getting billed $2,300 per home. Okay, that's a lot of money for people. I mean, I know the city probably doesn't have it, but we don't have it either. We're being told this is gonna be done and we're getting a bill. I thought they were still taking bids on the job. Really bothers me about the bump outs. They're doing it right by my area they're doing it on Cleveland. They're doing it all the way down the street. I'm not talking a little bump. I mean, it's going way into the road. This is quite a concern for the people that live on 72nd and Dakota, 72nd and Cleveland. I've never been here. I've never spoken a word. I've lived in West Dallas all my life. I pay my taxes. I don't expect much, I don't. But when you're gonna do a bump out and my I'm supposed to get out of my driveway. I don't have any room to pull out. What about the snow? <clears throat> I mean, this is a very big concern for people, all of us that live on that, that area. It's a very big inconvenience. I just wanted you to know. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Chet Parker, 7140 West Greenfield Avenue. I'm the president of the West Dallas Downtown Business Improvement, Improvement District. Um, on June 5th, we had our a la carte, and I know Don was here last Common Council to thank everybody. Um, we put our numbers together and finished up everything, and we have a lot of fun. We have games, we have music, we have food. Um, we use money that we raise from there for improvements in downtown West Dallas, but I wanted to tell you some of the stuff that happened that most people don't realize. Um, we give a lot back to the community. And uh, we had a lot of different groups that we give money to and let raise money and give away stuff from our inflatables and stuff. Um, CAD, Community Alliance Against Drugs, between the vendors, the inflatables, and their 50-50 rally, um, walked away with $1,900 this year. The Christmas parade between the tip jars from the generous um, bartenders and the uh, we get 50% from the beer tent profits, um, $3,922. The fire department, uh, we give um, money for the smoke detectors from our beer ta uh, dunk tanks, and there was $737 from that. 
and uh, we also had $737 from the other dunk tank that goes to the police department community services. Um, this, we have our Animal Avenue and they did some fundraising. They raised $400 for the no-kill shelters in the city and um, they raised uh, 400 pounds of pet food and 100 pounds of toys, beds, and cleaning supplies for those shelters who basically live off donations. So we just want to let people know there's a lot goes on with this event and it's community-wide and uh, we've got actually more groups coming in asking for help and stuff and we plan on expanding that this year and it was a record year for us so we want to thank everybody who came down and participated. Thank you for your comments. Hello, my name is Chuck Bachman. I live at 28A1, about the bump boats. Um, they, you guys did draw the lines. When I back out, if I had the curb there, I'm going to hit that bump boat. All right? So I could, now, this is a joint of summertime. How about winter? And is a buoy going to stop speeders? No, because they're going to know where it is and they're going to stay on the left-hand side so they miss it. Come on, remember back when we were kids? Would you all, you all, I'm not going to say all you, you all were kids and you all went spinning and drag racing. Come on now. And do you think you won't? Am I right? These kids, these old people, our younger kids going to do the same thing that we've done. So they're going to stay on the left-hand side, what could cause a head-on collision. Beside that, and decor, you got this daycare, whatever the heck that thing is. <coughs> they got the, you know, everything parked full. People are trying to get down to Decor to get on to, 70, on to 72nd. You got three, four cars stuck there because they don't have anywhere to go now. So what are you going to do? Cause an art traffic jam? Plus, you're going to you can really cause more accidents than I think safety. I've been living there often. I've been around there for 39 years. Yes, you got some cars being, but you got cars being down every. Street. So let's think of something safety for everybody else. Not just for the people that cry all the time. Thank you. Does anybody else have comments under citizen participation this evening? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dean Francis. I live at 6500. West Greenfield Avenue. I have just recently moved here. I've been here about a year and a half. I lived in Milwaukee before, and I'm ashamed to say that the way the people are treated around here is terrible. I, uh, I, have, I live in that apartment building with, there's children there, there's women there, there's kids there. We're woken up Fridays and Saturday nights to obscenities, people fighting in the parking lot, squealing tires, beeping horns. I mean, there, there's no need for that. I mean, it's, it's terrible. Uh, I'm sure each and every one of you have have kids, wouldn't want them to listen to this kind of language or hear the way these people act and the way they throw their litter around. There's just no reason in the world that that 6,500 club should ever get a liquor license. They bring people from uh, not the area. None of these people are from the area. They're all uh, from the north side of Milwaukee and they, they, they're brought down there by their friends and this new owner, he lives on the uh, north side of Milwaukee. Uh, you know what he's gonna bring, it's gonna be the same problems that we had before and it's not right. There's no way in the world that you should expect that your uh, people in West Dallas should have to live like that. Them and their family. And uh, I'm just voicing my opinion on uh, them never getting a license or no liquor license ever sold there and to be conscious of what you do because uh, we're judging your actions by our pleads because we're pleading for this. For, and it isn't just me, it's everybody. And uh, if these people were from West Dallas and 
own people with a license lived in West Dallas and had some interest in West Dallas, it'd be a different story, but they don't. They don't care about West Dallas or the people in the area. So I'm just kind of pleading to you that they don't get a, a liquor license. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Gary Williams. I live 2908 South 72nd. It's about the bump outs and uh, my concern about them is I ride a motorcycle every day in the summer and I noticed today when I was making a turn and if that car that was uh, on the side wasn't there, it would have been okay, but he wouldn't leave me any room. If there would have been that bump out, he would have went right into me and hit me head on. And that is after I was trying to make my turn. I was already at a, that was, <clears throat> that was on Cleveland and 72nd. I was turning right from a dead stop and he just flew right past. They just roll and stop. That's not going to stop them from uh, speeding around there. They need, in my opinion, they need to close that road over by KK. That'll stop people from speeding because the only people speeding around there are the ones from Milwaukee on the other side. It's not people from the West Dallas area. It's all the people that are on 72nd in Oklahoma or they're over there east of 72nd Street. They'll come flying through the corners and everything else. Second thing about that, when you're doing the roads and that, are you doing the roads or are you doing everybody's driveway, the, the approach to the driveways? It's not clear what they're expecting <coughs> from us to uh, know what's going on when we don't get the full story of what they're all doing. And at least I didn't get the full story. People on the next block, they just had theirs all done. They're only paying $800, $200, $400, because I went to the neighbors and asked everyone. And here they're trying to tell us that it's gonna cost us $21 to $2,700, but what's it for? I mean, is it gonna be for approaches, sidewalks and approaches, for doing the street? Well, don't we pay taxes to have the streets done? Don't we pay taxes on the gasoline to have these streets done? Or is it all for highway? I don't know. I'm just saying we're paying an awful lot of taxes, but every time something comes up, something has to be done. But who knows what, what can be accomplished about this because we never get a straight answer. I got several letters in the mail about this, and I mean, to be told that we're going to be paying this no matter what, but you didn't even have anybody come out and appraise it yet, really shocked me. And the only reason I knew that was because there was a guy doing all the appraisal work or trying to do a bid on the appraisal <coughs> work. And he said he was the first one that's been trying to get in there. So who knows what the real cost is gonna be. If you don't know the cost, how can you tell the people how much we're gonna pay until we know what the cost is? To, to warn us, to give us a, a warning of how much it could cost is one thing, but tell us that's what we're gonna be paying <coughs> when you didn't even get an estimate yet, it's pretty sad in my eyes. I'm already in debt up to my ears because medical and financial, but you know, and you can't keep pushing people like that. They, they need to know what's going on. And these bump outs in uh, Wauwatosa, they do have bump outs, but they're situated a little differently. They're, the roads are wider and they have them at only, the, which same thing at the corners, but you already have two lanes on the main road and you have two lanes on the side roads. Here we don't have that. If you put the bump outs out the way it is now, it's gonna cause confusion for a lot of people. And it's mostly the younger kids that fly by there, not the, uh, well, older adults don't, but <laughs> most of the kids do. And when they do, they don't look out for kids that are running around the streets. They don't look out for any of that. And that, to me, is more important. More, probably more officers coming through there <coughs> because you very rarely see officers coming through that area. And if that is a thoroughfare for the fire department, people need to know that so they know how to judge what's going on. Like me, for instance, wanting that road shut down because there's no reason for everybody else to be using a road that all they're using it for is to go from 
uh, 72nd in Oklahoma to Beloit Road as fast as they can, and that's what they use it for. And I'm talking fast as they can. You have one minute remaining. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Alfred Couturier, I'm back uh, from 2801 South 72nd Street. Uh, I missed a few things. Uh, the people have asked me, like, uh, about the assessments, if uh, it, there would be reduced if the bump outs were canceled, and I told them that no. I said that's a fixed figure. And <coughs> the last meeting I was to on May 17th, I was told, like, say, your street openings would be 22 and a half feet wide with the bump outs, but that's changed on the blueprints right now to 20 feet on all four corners of uh, South 72nd and Cleveland Avenue. In front of my house uh, on Montana, they are coming out seven and a half feet to eight feet and reducing it down to 22 feet by my particular uh, intersection. And uh, people cannot park in front of their houses. And on the way here uh, tonight, going from Beloit Road to uh, Cleveland Avenue, there is a lot of uh, where Clint's Park is. There's a lot of uh, bump outs that are going to be put in, like on Harrison and Arthur. Uh, one stretch is 90 feet long, and I know the people that go there for the baseball games uh, park there. They will not be able to park there. And when I drove through, uh, there was just one lane, and uh, nobody challenged my Cadillac. They got out of my way, and I went straight through. But they had to duck off to the sides. So that's all I have to say for tonight now. Thank you. Thank you. We have about two minutes left under citizen participation this evening because we keep this to about a half an hour on our agenda. So if you can condense things into a minute because you have somebody else behind you. Okay, one minute. One thing I'm going to add to you guys, one, I'm Chuck Bachman. I'm from uh, 72nd Street. Why don't you people, you guys, drive past there once, look at this once, and look what we're talking about. That would be a good suggestion. Look. Get out and walk around there once, and you know what we're talking about. My name is Mark Vicena. I live at 1338 South 65th Street. Um, I sent all of the members an email about a week and a half ago. I apologize if I did wrong, uh, didn't follow protocol. Uh, a few of you responded and opened them, and I thank you for that. Uh, if you are the ones deleted it, well, so be it. But I wanted to give you some information on item number 53, the 6500 bar. This is not just something that's been happening recently. This has been going back to 2007, 2009. Uh, big heroin trafficking out of there, illegal liquor purchases, illegal gambling uh, up until the recent years. Um, I was at the council meeting in the License and Health. I, was granted the privilege to talk to you guys. I sent you the video. I hope you saw the blatant lies that were presented to you. Um, you know, people can come in here and they want a liquor license. And in this case, it's a new name, same game. It's gonna be the same game. I've been told, give them an opportunity, give them an opportunity. I've been giving them an opportunity since 2007. They ran out of opportunities we need to make sure that they don't have a liquor license. They're a nuisance property. I mean, definition, you can look up the city code as far as what a nuisance property is, and they fit every single, the noise, the violence, the trash. Um, you know, besides the, you know, the verbal, they're disrespectful to the neighbors, they're disrespectful to the police. I mean, what kind of neighbors is this in West Ellis? And here you got the six points being built, the market at six points and you've got this kind of bar. Um, I haven't met the new license applicants. Um, you know, it's a, like I say, different name, same game. 
Uh, they're advertising a 6,500 restaurant and bar. That's no restaurant. I mean, give me a break. That place is a hole in a wall. It always was. It always will be. We need to shut them down as far as not being able to serve alcohol. And I think that the elderly people living across the street will thank you. My neighbors will thank you. I will thank you. Um, I mean, the, it, it's in your hands. If, you know, if, if, they're, if you value their business selling liquor more than you value me as an outstanding resident, you know, a member of the uh, uh, neighborhood watch, um, the decision is yours. I'm giving you the choice. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Cheryl Cruz. I live at 1344 South 65th. It's about the 6500 bar. I agree with what they both said. It's loud music all night long. It's swearing. It's they park anywhere they want. They blatantly open their doors, just leave trash all over their yards. You see them all night. I work early in the morning at the hospital. I can't sleep. Since they've been closed like a couple weeks now, like the best sleep ever the neighborhood's peaceful you see the neighbors come walking their dogs now you see everyone out and about the spotlights bar is right across the street there's not no trouble with them ever the patrons are respectful you hear, might hear the car door you don't hear loud music they're not zipping around swearing they stand they hover on greenfield avenue to smoke there's like they don't let pedestrians walk by they're just disrespectful it's just I don't know. I just I hope not it doesn't open back up again. That's about all I have to say. I agree with them. Thank you. Okay, we are going to wrap up uh, citizen participation this evening. And we will move on to item F. Our standing committees will be meeting during recess. Those room numbers are listed on your agendas on page one. Uh, moving on to page two on your agendas um item g i don't have a mayor's report this evening we'll go to item h are there any reports from the older persons mayor Devine. alderman lysak i just want to announce to the people on 72nd street that you all should have received a letter indicating that there is a neighborhood meeting tomorrow at six o'clock on the corner of 72nd and cleveland engineering went out there and painted the pump outs on the street so that everybody up and down the block can see exactly what the pump outs look like, where they would be, and can make an informed decision then on whether they want them or not. The um, petition that went around, unfortunately, also, besides a lot of people not understanding what pump outs were, also said that the city was uh, looking at putting in um, uh, speed bumps or, uh, or, or um, uh, um, uh, ditches in the road, and that is, uh, was something that was never proposed. There was never any consideration to put speed bumps in. So um, uh, engineering wanted to make it clear that all they're talking about is the pump outs and they just want everybody to know what it looks like and what it'll be and if the people, uh, if the majority of the property owners are against it, there won't be bump outs. If they're in favor of it, there will be bump outs. So it's gonna be up to the people on the street. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Lysak. Any other reports from the older persons? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. I just want to remind everybody that there will be a blood drive here tomorrow. Uh, summertime is a time of high blood donation need. And unfortunately, with people's vacation schedules, a lot of the regular donors aren't out, you know, making the regular donations. Also, a lot of donations come through schools. Obviously, the schools are out. So there's a, a Red Cross blood drive here tomorrow downstairs in uh, what's called the Art Gallery. I think they're going to start calling it the Roth Gallery now, right? <laughs> but uh, from 1 to 6 p.m., uh, you can just walk in. Uh, it's just a regular blood donation drive. It's not specific for any entity, but it, it is a very important thing for the, for the community. Um, somebody you know needs blood every week or a blood product. Somebody you know is using something that can't be bought or, or manufactured and only can come from other people. 1 to 6 p.m. downtown or downstairs here at City Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Weigel. Any other reports from the older persons? Mayor Devine. Alder Person Reinke. Uh, thank you. I serve on the a la carte committee. This is the committee that helps put together this uh, a la carte <coughs> that is held in West Dallas uh, that Chet had alluded to. Basically, I want to commend the bid people. They work so hard. I, uh, we don't really know the ramifications <coughs> of, of how this is all put together and how hard they work 
to make it a successful venture for our, for our community. And it is a grand celebration for our city and we're known all over the community, you might say, uh, the vast community uh, for this celebration. It's, a, it's a, like I say, a grand celebration and everyone had a good time. Uh, they start at five o'clock in the morning and work late into the evening just to make it nice for our, our, our community. And I w would really like to thank the, the people from the bid for doing such a fantastic job. Next, I'd also uh, like to commend our, <coughs> our new artist, you might say, for her work on the wall that was uh, dedicated this last week. Um, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony. The artwork itself is inspirational for our city. It's the first, first wall we've, we've decorated, you might say, and, and really it's, it's very attractive. But what inspired me most was the development department went over to the skate park that's right next door to this building and invited the skaters to attend the ribbon cutting. And one of the young men, there were about, mm, I would say 10 to 12 young people that um, came over to celebrate with us. And one of the young men says, this is really a good thing for West Dallas. And his buddy said, well, why? And he says, well, I know they want to promote our, 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 our new image in West Dallas, and this sure should help people want to move here. So I just wanted to share that with you. This was a young, young man, and he was most inspired with, with this wall after seeing it. And this was before we had pie and ice cream. <laughs> So it was really a, 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 a fun time, and uh, I was glad that we could share with these skaters. Okay, now I got a new hat. This is the third hat I'm wearing. I'm chair of the celebrations committee. <coughs> what are we celebrating? Independence Day. Woo, that's it, that's it. Am I got it right? Fourth of July is less than two weeks away, and I hope you're getting ready for it, because. The Celebrations Committee is sure getting ready for it. We're having a grand celebration. Uh, first of all, on July 2nd, we're having uh, the Rec Department staff give out prizes for the best costume and the best wagon and, and lots of prizes for the young people at 8.30 in the morning. Then after that, July 2nd again, we're having the parade at 10 o'clock. It starts at 77th Street, goes all the way down to 70th, and then all the way down to Veterans Park, where we're going to have a grand celebration there because we have bands, food, refreshments, lots of fun things for everyone. So please come and enjoy that at the Veterans Park. Then, after that, we'll have the fireworks program at the grandstand that that'll take place at 930 but at 830 we have a new highlight and we're highlighting our West Dallas suburban band we will have a small con uh, you might say a concert very very good band if you've never heard them you've missed it because they're really qualified players they play before a lot of them are teachers and and they play very well, and it'll be a lot of patriotic songs to get you all inspired for this big celebration. Um, on, the, on the bottom, well, I would say I have to let you know that the state fair has initiated a parking fee, and that will go up this year to $6. So be prepared if you want to park in, in the state fair park. However, we certainly in, uh, inspire you to come out and enjoy the celebration with, uh, with everyone, and hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll come to something or everything. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other reports from the older persons this evening? I know it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> All right. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysick. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council regular meeting of June 7th, 2016. Second. There's a motion with a second by Elder Person Probst. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. 
Um, moving to item J on your agenda, items not referred to committee, I'll ask for a motion to refer, um, place item three on file and refer item four to the city attorney. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman May, second by Alderperson Reinke. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Item K, we have no standing committee reports this evening. Mayor Devine. Alderman Lysak. I move that we stand in recess until conclusion of the committee meeting. Second. There's a motion with a second by Alderman Vitale. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are in recess.